This is Eddie Hearn, Matchroom Boxing. You are watching Sporting Icons. You don't need to be anywhere else. Sorry, Barry Hearn, the father of Eddie Hearn. Um, he is the head honcho of Matchroom Sport and, of course, the founder of Matchroom Sport as well as. Now, it's important to note that Matchroom Sport, Matchroom Boxing are actually two separate entities. Um, one is run by Barry Hearn, which involves the snooker, the darts, um, all the... Uh, all that kind of other stuff. Eddie Hearn runs the boxing, okay? So it's actually a separate entity. Barry Hearn has nothing to do with the boxing unless Eddie Hearn asked for advice or asked him to get involved. Anyway, uh, Barry Hearn has said that Deontay Wilder is in fact the weakest link. So big up to Sinderman and everybody else who's been sending me this article from Barry Hearn. And this is what Barry Hearn had to say. I'm giving you my personal feelings, not necessarily the company policy. So I believe that Anthony Joshua is head and shoulders the number one heavyweight in the world. And he said this to Love Sport Radio. He continues, I think he's the only credible world champion out there. I think he'll prove to be one of the great heavyweights, not now, but over the next five or six years. Anthony Joshua is a very intelligent young man. He plans his future like that. We're not looking to make a, f a quick few quid. We're looking to build a legacy. Now, I could be totally wrong. And the moment he gets beat, I'll hold my hands up. But at the moment, he hasn't been beat, has he? He's had 22 fights, six world title defences. It's unbelievable in the history of heavyweight boxing already after 22 fights. You know, Deontay Wilder's had over 40 fights. Probably only had one or two proper ones, but that's okay. And he goes on. If Wilder and Fury are not coming to the party quickly, I would imagine that Eddie is looking at Jarrah Miller in New York as a Madison Square Garden debut for AJ would be commercially very solid. Then Dillian White, who I think is pound for pound, the most dangerous heavyweight out there. If I was ranking them in danger, I would say that Deontay Wilder is the easiest fight. I think Jarrah Miller is an unknown fight because we don't know how good he is, but he's a big lump. I think Tyson Fury is tricky, but when you hit him, he does tend to fall over. Although, to his credit, he gets up, which is remarkable. I've got the, right, the greatest respect for Tyson for what he's done. He pulled himself together from the brink. A brilliant story. But the most dangerous heavyweight right now is Dillian White. So that's where we're up to. Barry Hearn's statement. So I'll put that article in the description box for you all to have a little read for yourself. So what he's saying is, um, Deontay Wilde is the weakest link, right? Now... I can agree with him in some ways and also go, mm, I'm not too sure in other ways. Um, Dillian White is, I totally agree, and I've been saying this consistently. Some agree, some don't. Listen, everyone's got, got their own opinion. But Dillian White is the most dangerous heavyweight out there right now. He can end your night at any given moment with that left hook or that right uppercut or the straight right. You can just end it, and of course, the body shots are phenomenal, hence the reason why it's called the body snatcher. Now, in addition to the powerful shots that uh, he lands, he can take a lot of shots too. Um, he's got a pretty good engine on him, and he can box, which is important when you're fighting Anthony Joshua. You need to be able to box, okay? So yeah, I agree, Dylan White is the most dangerous out there, and to beat Anthony Joshua, can he beat Joshua on points? That's a very, very arguable question. I think Anthony Joshua might just be the better boxer, but again, that is down to experience. Um, with Dylan White only having seven uh, amateur bouts and Anthony Joshua 45. So, of course, Anthony Joshua has been learning his trade as an amateur. Dylan White's been learning on the job. But if he hits Joshua, it could be a good night. People can talk about the first fight, the fact that Joshua did uh, stop him in seven rounds. But as I said before, um, Dylan White, this was very, very early on in his, in his career with very little to, little to no amateur um, experience, seven fights only. And the fact he had a very dodgy shoulder, which uh, he required surgery afterwards. Again, I've said it before, I'll say it again. If you guys watched that fight in round number two, when he hits Joshua and goes after him, Joshua's on the ropes and um, Dylan White goes to finish him. He takes a little bit of a, a pausing stumble, if you like because um, he just feels a shooting pain going through his body from his um, shoulder. Now, that aside, I'm not saying that um, Dylan White would have got him out in that moment. Who knows? We just don't know. But again, I'm not saying that Joshua wouldn't have beat him anyway. Again, it just, it's up in the air, which is why I want to see the rematch. But Dylan White is stupidly, stupidly dangerous. And I keep saying it, but people just don't seem to understand that. 
for the most part. But anyway, time will tell, right? And he's proved me right each and every time, as I said to Dylan White when he's on this channel last week. Go check out that interview. They're just under an hour long. Um, now, as far as Tyson Fury goes, again, doesn't carry that much power. He does have power, but he chooses not to use it. Why? Because when you throw big shots, you leave yourself open. Tyson Fury is a cautious fighter. He likes to win the rounds. He likes to put a bit of a beating on you. And can he outbox Anthony Joshua? I'll probably say out of all the heavyweights right now, Tyson Fury is the one who can most certainly outbox Anthony Joshua. And I've said it many times before that if these two fought, it's either Anthony Joshua by knockout or Tyson Fury on points. But yeah, Tyson Fury is... When he's on form, yeah, he's very, very difficult to land on. And Tyson Fury's right. He said it himself before. The only way to beat me is to nail me to the canvas. Um, on December the 1st, that wasn't a fully fit and tuned up Tyson Fury. It just wasn't. Next time, still won't be a fully up-to-date Tyson Fury, but it'll be closer to it, right? So if uh, he was to fight Deontay Wilder in a rematch, he'll be a lot more... Um, sharp in the rematch but anyway so moving on from that one yeah um and like i say tyson fury is definitely awkward and he could frustrate aj all night big baby jared miller now he's a guy he is a bit of an unknown commodity for a big lad of course he hits hard of course he does but he's not the biggest puncher in the world you think that he would be due to his size right but he doesn't carry a lot of power of what we've seen i don't know what it is whether he's been holding back or whether he just doesn't have power i don't know maybe some training injury don't know but he's one of these guys where he can take your heart and your soul in the middle of the ring because as we know he can take a shot he really really can for whatever reason though opponents don't tend to go to the body too much which i would have thought that being a heavyweight if you're a pretty decent puncher that's where you'll go is to the body with um somebody like miller but they don't do it and he's got a very very good chin very rock hard head and that's soul destroying for a fighter when you're hitting your opponent with all that you've got and they keep on coming forward he's like a huge zombie just keeps on coming forward and does not stop so how does anthony joshua deal with that if he's unloading on jared miller and jared miller is smiling and still walking forward then what you got to do because miller he throws out of all the heavyweights it's probably only andy ruiz jr and adam kaunaki that could potentially equal him with number of punches thrown per round so for a big lad, he's got one hell of an engine on him and does throw a hell of a lot of punches. But as I said, not the biggest punch in the world. But they could be concussive if he lands it right. But Big Baby Jared Miller is definitely awkward. But how can he fare against somebody who is a huge puncher? As yet, he hasn't been in there with anybody who's a devastating puncher, right? Now, we'll move on to Deontay Wilder. Now, Deontay Wilder... If you take away his big right hand, which Tyson Fury did and plenty of others have done before, then you know he's very, very exposed out in the open. He's walking around with his damn pants down, okay, if you take away the big right hand. But ultimately, somewhere within, um, within the fight, he lands it, okay? It's just what he does. But I've always said that Wilder is a decision loss waiting to happen. Now, that's not to say he can't do anything else because, you know, he's got a pretty decent left hook. He's fast on his feet and he's got pretty good range as well. So he can frustrate. He's got a pretty decent jab. He opts not to use it too much. But against Tyson Fury, he was doing it quite well. And he impressed me a little bit in that fight with his jab. Um, but ultimately, listen, the only way Wilder can beat Joshua is by landing and knocking him out. We've seen um, Joshua go down before. From uh, Vladimir Klitschko, who's arguably a bigger puncher than um, Deontay Wilder. Again, people will debate that. But arguably, he's a bigger puncher than Wilder. He went down and he got up. And Klitschko is not just a one-trick pony with a big punch. He carries that power in the right hand. And he's a, his all-round game is phenomenal. And Anthony Joshua not only took the shots, but gave him back and stopped him. So, is Deontay Wilder the weak link? Potentially, yes, he is. But that's not a disrespect to Deontay Wilder, not at all. Because we know Deontay Wilder can end the night of any person in the damn planet. Okay, you put him in that ring. If he lands that right hand, it's you're on the verge of going out. Or you're out. It's one of the two. Okay, but um, 
as I said, he is a decision loss when to happen. Anthony Joshua can also box, but he has power when he boxes as well. So this is the difference when people talk about how Tyson Fury done it and to how Anthony Joshua does it. Not only can Joshua box like a um, Tyson Fury, not as awkward as Tyson Fury, of course, but he has power. He hurts you with both hands. So is Deontay Wilder the weak link out of those ones? Potentially, yes. It is debatable about Miller. As I said, he is an unknown because he hasn't been there with big punches. Can he take a big shot? So far, it's saying yes. But as I said, you put him in there with a Joshua or a Dylan White or a Deontay Wilder um, or a Lewis Ortiz who can actually hit hard, then we have to wait and see. Can big baby Miller keep on smiling and coming forward like the damn juggernaut? Well, we'll have to wait and see. So that's Barry Hearn's statement. Article in the description box, as always. Go give it a read. Come to your own conclusions on this video, of course. As always, drop yourself a comment. Click thumbs up. And of course, subscribe. Catch you all on the next video.